Experts at the Institute for the Study of War, ISW, have noted that Russian leader Vladimir Putin went to Baku supposedly to showcase diplomatic activity and tried to divert attention from the uncomfortable situation in Russia's Kursk Oblast caused by the Ukrainian offensive. Recall on the 18th of August, Russian leader Vladimir Putin traveled to Azerbaijan, seemingly to divert attention from the recent Ukrainian offensive in Kursk Oblast and to reinforce his image as a capable diplomat. Putin, accompanied by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and a Russian delegation, arrived in Baku for a two-day visit aimed at discussions with Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev. The talks reportedly focused on strengthening Russian-Azerbaijani relations, particularly in the energy sector, promoting Russian language programs in Azerbaijan, and exploring Russia's role in brokering peace between Armenia and Azerbaijan. The timing of this visit is noteworthy given the ongoing situation in Kursk Oblast and the Kremlin's continued efforts to downplay the Ukrainian incursion's magnitude and impact. Russian state media focused on Putin's trip to Azerbaijan, amplifying minute details, likely in part to divert attention from the uncomfortable situation in Russia by saturating the information space with a showcase of the Kremlin's global diplomatic engagement and alleged successes. The ISW said, Vazin Istori, a Russian media outlet, reported that Putin's approach to the Kursk situation has exposed significant shifts within the Kremlin's power hierarchy, many of which have been unfolding in recent months. In a notable move, Putin appointed his aide, Alexei Dumin, to lead the counterterrorism efforts against Ukrainian activities in Kursk Oblast. Vazin Istori noted that this decision suggested that Putin was increasingly wary of the Russian general staff and the Ministry of Defense, organizations typically responsible for such military operations and was instead placing his trust in close associates. An insider reportedly revealed to Vazin Istori that Dumin's appointment had sparked tensions with members of the Russian presidential administration, further indicating that Putin continues to favor personal loyalty over professional expertise in key roles. Vazin Istori's reporting strongly suggests that the Kremlin has increasingly oriented its main priorities towards regime stability. The destruction of all three bridges across the Seam River in the Kursk region could force Russian troops to repeat the Kherson scenario. This was stated in a commentary to Espresso by military expert, Director of Development of the Information and Consulting Company Defense Express, Valery Ryabik, commenting on the information that the Ukrainian armed forces could have hit the bridge in the area of the settlement of Kariz. I would like to remind you that before this, a bridge was destroyed in the Glushkovo area, in the Zvanoi area, and now there is a third bridge which completely blocks the enemy's base area, which is limited on four sides and, in fact, we can talk about a certain operational encirclement, he explained. According to the expert, control over the crossings will leave the Russian army without the ability to provide its own logistics. According to Ryabik, this area has an area of about 700 kilometers, which is already under remote control of Ukrainian troops. A situation is arising where the enemy will be forced to make a difficult decision for itself and gradually do the same thing it did in the Kherson region when it was forced to retreat beyond the Dnieper, the analyst noted. Recall last week, it became known about strikes on a bridge in the Russian village of Glushkovo, the very next day, the Russians announced that it had been destroyed. On August the 18th, the bridge near the village of Zvanoi came under attack and was significantly damaged. And on August the 19th, Russian war correspondents wrote about the destruction of the last bridge across the seam. As reported by Defense Express, with all three bridges in the area destroyed, Russia now has no major river crossings left. This leaves most of the Glushkovsky district trapped between the Ukrainian border and the Seam River effectively cut off. This area covers about 600 square kilometers, roughly the same size as the area currently controlled by Ukrainian forces in Russia. Russian mill bloggers are already claiming that the destruction of bridges isn't a major issue because they've set up pontoon crossings. 
Public satellite images confirm this, showing that the pontoon crossing near the Glushkovo was restored. While building a pontoon crossing over the Seam River, which is 30 to 80 meters wide in this area, isn't difficult for the Russian army. Pontoon crossings have limited capacity, so the flow of traffic is much slower, Defense Express added.